Greetings, everyone. This is Fred Coulter. Welcome to Church at Home. Church at Home is dedicated to restoring original Christianity for today. What is the truth of the Bible? What is the truth of the Word of God? How do we know where we are in prophecy? What has happened to the world? How did we come to have such corrupt governments around the world? And it just seems everywhere you look, there's trouble, there's difficulty, there's war, there's famine, there's pestilence, there's natural disasters. Or like we have the oil explosion in the Gulf. Where will that lead? We'll just have to wait and see. But when you analyze the whole thing, where does that come down to? It comes down to corrupt human behavior and corrupt government. Why? Because as we have seen, they rejected God. And if you reject God, he rejects you. Then you're left on your own. And what happens on an individual basis and on a community basis and on a national basis and then a world basis? Where does that lead? Where are we going? How did we get where we are? It all has to do with the kingdom of God. It all has to do whom do you follow? Under whose authority are you? God's authority or the world and Satan's authority? You have to choose. God set before us life and death, blessing and cursing. And he said those Blessings and cursings will still be in effect as long as there is the heaven and the earth. So don't be fooled by any sweet-talking religionist by saying, Oh, well, you know, God's law is a curse. That is not true. God's law is not a curse. Sin is the curse. And since sin is a curse, and it began with Adam and Eve with their sin against God, Let's see how it carried through with their progeny, and let's see what happened to the world because they decided to choose Satan's way and decide for themselves what is good and evil. You know, that's the way it is today. I have my opinion. I believe, and that sounds so erudite and so important, doesn't it? I'm so self-important that I say, oh, God, that law doesn't apply to me. Are you that way? Oh, no, not me. I'm righteous. I go to church. Really? What do you learn? Oh, they use the Bible there. Oh, that's good. How do they use it? Do they rightly divide the Word of God? Or do they use it for their own convenience and their own theology and their own denomination and their own religion? And we're going to see the root cause of all the problems in the world today and in individual lives and in the governments of this world is because people have chosen the way of Satan. And it began with the way of Cain, and it rejects the rule of God in the individual life. So let's come back to Genesis 4, and let's look at the rest of the story, a truthful account about what happened. There will always be in the world those who are righteous, like Abel. And he brought forth an offering according to God's instructions, meaning he obeyed the laws and commandments of God. Are you like Abel? Do you love God and keep his commandments? Or are you like Cain, that you're going to decide what you're going to do for God your way? And God 
have better accept it because, boy, I'm putting forth all this effort, and I choose to do it this way. Well, that's what Cain did. Let's read here, Genesis 4 and verse 4. And Abel also brought of the firstlings of his flock and the fat of it, and the Lord had regard to Abel and his offering. Why? Because he did it according to the command of God. He didn't add to it, didn't take away from it. He did it as God said. With the right attitude, with the right heart, loving God, keeping his commandments, and bringing the right offering. Now let's look at Cain. But he did not have regard unto Cain and his offering, and Cain was extremely angry, and his countenance fell. <laughs> ah, why didn't you take my offering? That's the way people are today. You go up to some minister and say, look, don't you think we ought to keep the commandments of God? Uh, ooh, who are you? You, you, you want to be under law and under the curse? Really? Is the God of truth, who's the God of love, would he give to his people a law that was a curse? If you answer yes, well, you might as well turn off your computer and go somewhere else because you have no clue as to what the truth is. All of God's laws are given in love. If you obey, there are blessings. That's what we saw last time, right? Yes. If you disobey and go after other gods and go after other ways, or even worse yet, you do like Cain. And most people don't understand what Cain did, and that set the pattern, the mold, for the civilization before the flood. And we're going to examine what happened to those nations, how they behaved, and we will draw some parallels with today. So let's read on. God said to Cain, if you do well, or that is, if you do right, according to my instructions and my command, shall you not be accepted? God is no respecter of persons, but you must do what God says. Let me ask you in your life. Do you do what God says, or do you do what you think is good and expect God to accept it? Let's read on. But if you do not well, sin lies at the door. Very interesting, isn't it? Where was that door? Well, that was the entrance to the Garden of Eden. So there was an altar there that they could bring their offerings and Cain brought his, and he didn't do it according to the instructions of God. Like many people today, they have their own religions, they have their own ways, and I could not help but think of this when I saw of the, in India, they have a temple to the rat god. Have you ever seen that on National Geographic or History Channel? And how do they honor the rat god? Oh, the temple's full of rats. And they come and bring food, an offering to the gods, because they believe in the lie of reincarnation. And they feed the food to the rats, lest they sin and are reincarnated into a lower form of life. Nonsense and foolishness. They're cut off from God. Well, the same way here. God says, if you do well, shall you not be accepted? If you do not, sin lies at the door. What is sin? Sin is the transgression of the law. It also means lawlessness. And there are three forms of lawlessness you need to understand. Transgression of the law, rejection of the law through anarchist, and modification of the laws of God. Now, I want you to think on that the next time you think Sunday is the day of worship, and the next time you go into your Catholic cathedral, and there are lots of idols all around. They've taken away and added to, haven't they? Yes, indeed. 
sin lies at the door. That's why God is not there. That's why church at home. So you can study your own Bible. You can learn at home. You can understand the Word of God at home. Now notice, what are we to do when sin lies at the door? Its desire is for you under the inspiration, or how shall we say, the influence of Satan the devil. Its desire is for you to hold you in bondage, to keep you transgressing against God. However, when you know the truth from the error, sin from righteousness, right from wrong, he says, but you must rule over it. So we don't have to be captives to sin, but people are, because they don't want to accept the rule of God from the kingdom of God. What do they accept then? They accept the rule of man under the kingdom of Satan, the devil, though God has divided the world and let it be ruled over by angels, righteous angels and fallen angels. Now notice what happened. Cain went out and repented and everything was wonderful from then on. No, it didn't happen that way. He got jealous and angry and hateful toward his brother and murdered Abel. And what was his reaction when, when God said, well, where's your brother Abel? I don't know where he is. Am I my brother's keeper? And true to every cowardice, crook, and murderer, when God said, his blood cries out to me from the ground. Oh, don't execute me. God didn't. He said, okay, I'm going to put a mark on you. And everyone's going to know what you did. Now, you can be sure that Cain did not tell his, his descendants, his sons and the descendants from him, that this mark that he had, whatever it was, was because he sinned and murdered his brother. No, we have to use a little how shall we say, extension of understanding? He probably told him, look, this is from God. God put that there because he approves of what I do. And he built his society. And you read on down through here, all the way through, Cain's way was multiplied. What were the fruits of it? God says you'll know them by their fruits. So let's look at the fruits of Cain society. Now, there was the parallel generations of the righteous men that came down to Noah. There was the generations from Cain on down to this one world mess that we find before the flood. And what happens when you leave God? It keeps in degree getting worse and worse and worse. What happens when there is no change in repentance? God's judgment must come. What happens to the society? Well, let's read it here because we are going to see that history does repeat itself, and even Jesus said it would. That as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. So let's read what it was here. Let's pick it up here in verse 1. And it came to pass when men began to multiply in the face of the earth, when daughters were born to them, that the sons of the mighty one saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves from all whom they chose. Now, some people interpret this as demons intermarrying with the human beings. Can't be, because the Bible shows it's kind after kind. Okay? Oh, these were giants. No, the real word in the Hebrew means tyrants. Do we have that today? Oh, plenty of them. All right, so here's what God says. It got so out of hand that God had to forewarn them what was going to happen. Let's read it. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man in his going astray, for he is but flesh. 
yet his days shall be 120 years. From that time, God sentenced men to live no longer than 120 years. And from that time, right on through the flood and afterwards, the age of men came down from hundreds of years old down to 120, gradually through every generation. Verse 4, and there were tyrants on the earth in those days, and after that the sons of God, that is from the line of Seth, came into the daughters of men, that is the line of Cain, and they bore children to them, and they were mighty men who existed of old, men of renown. Not something? Strong, great, powerful, mighty men. You know what all human beings need to do, as I've said before, I'll say again. If you think you're beautiful and wonderful as a woman, and you have all of these great abilities, and if you think you're strong and powerful as a man and have intellect, do a belly button check, okay? Very simple. All have one, right? (laughs) What does that tell you? You came from your mother and father, right? Yes, indeed. And you're subject to death. God is merciful and loving and kind, and even to the unrighteous and the unholy, he gives them breath, he gives them air, he gives them food, he gives them water, sends them rain. But that doesn't change the nature of anyone. So here's what Cain's society developed into. And now they're finding through research that, yes, they had many things and many inventions, They even now know they had atomic energy. They even now can understand that, yes, they had airplanes. They flew. How long ago was it that the airplane was invented? Well, I think it was, what, 1906? Somewhere around there. Now look where we are. 104 years later. Men going to the moon. Satellites going out into the universe. Remember, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. We'll see that. But here's the thing that I I want to emphasize here is because the way of Cain followed Satan the devil and his kingdom and rejected God and his kingdom, here's what happened. And the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Is that not the way it is today? Do a little channel surfing. Hold in your one hand the Ten Commandments of God. Hold in your other hand your remote control. Memorize the Ten Commandments and look at them as you go through. Look at the ads, look at the movies, look at the sports, look at everything that is done, and what do you find? Sin, lawlessness, commandment breaking, occultism, Satan worship, demon worship, and how many times and how many places can you really find the truth of God even on the religious Christian channels? You can't find it. See, because every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Now, what's on your mind? What are your thoughts? Are they thoughts of love toward God, love toward neighbor, love toward brethren, even love toward enemy? Are they on evil, on sex, on drugs, on murder, on killing? Oh, I don't do that. Do you watch movies vicariously and participate in it? Evil continually. Have you ever watched the report that comes out concerning crime in your city? If you don't think it's evil continually, watch what's happening in Arizona with the invasion of the illegal aliens coming through with AK-47s and having mountaintop spies. They know where all the border guards are all the time. And had been shot by an AK-47 And yet we have such a dunce of a president and dunce of a homeland security and people that will not enforce the border. And you know why they won't do it? Because they're so enamored with abortion and their own agenda that they don't want to do it. Why? Because every imagination of the thoughts of their hearts are only evil 
continuously. And the ones who bring the most lies are the religious leaders and the political leaders. So what happened? It got so bad. And the Lord repented that he made man on the earth, and he was grieved in heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the crawling thing and the fowl of the air, for I have repented, I have made them. What a sorry mess that it is. And the flood occurred. And except for one man, Noah, says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. One man. When it comes, when all the governments reject God, God will choose one man. And he will choose those individuals who love him. And we're reaching that again today. Verse 11. Now the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. Is that not what we have today? Watch your news. Anywhere in the world. Death, destruction, mayhem, disasters. All because of sin. All because of evil. All because men reject God. Remember what God said? Set before us life and death, blessing and cursing. Remember that? Do you want to live? Do you want to, do you want to prosper? Then you go God's way. If you don't, you have death, destruction, sin, and all of that just collapsing in in a, such a corrupt and violent way that it's almost mind-boggling. Well, it was back then. Verse 12, God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted its way upon the earth. All flesh. That's what we have today, don't we? Yes, indeed. Why? Because they followed Satan the devil. They followed their own way. They did not follow the kingdom of God. They rejected God. They followed the way of Cain. God sent the flood. Destroyed everything. And you can go to the tallest mountain on the face of the earth. And what do you find? You find strata with marine life in it. Because there was a flood. And it did cover the whole earth. Matter of fact, they know there were two floods. One, before the creation of man. Two, the flood of Noah. Why are we here? We want to think we're all important. We want to think that, oh, how good we are, strong we are, smart we are. You know, just like today, what do they say in politics? Since we're speaking of politics and the kingdom of God or the kingdom of Satan, here in the Western world, we have reached a point of no return because of all of our lying, cheating economic ways. They're never going to solve it. And it's all going to come crashing down because they reject the way of God want to follow Satan the devil. Oh, but they don't think that. These are really good men trying. Really? Is it so bad that it cannot be repaired at this point? I want you to learn a lesson, a real principle you need to understand. You cannot solve spiritual problems by political action and elections. But you can solve political problems by spiritual action and by spiritual solutions, following the laws of God. So God says to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Then he said, Make an ark. Quite an engineering feat. We won't go through the whole thing concerning the ark, but let's understand something we are here because of one man, Noah. And as we're going to see later, the nations of Israel and the true churches of God are here because of one man, Abraham. And we receive forgiveness of sin. 
and the Holy Spirit of God because of one man, the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to understand that. So when you look at the Broadway and you look at the scope of how people are doing things, you're going to know they're going the way of Cain, either in religion or in government. And the way of Cain leads to destruction. And it's right in the midst of the so-called Christian churches today. Now, if you want to know how we got to where we are religiously today and then also concerning governments, you email us for this book. We'll send it to you at no cost. Occult holidays or God's holy days, which? Because the holy days of God are the things that tell you about the plan of God and what he is doing. And when you understand the history of the occult, you are going to find a tremendous insight if you're willing to take the time to read and understand it, which is this. The world is in the grips of Satan the devil. Now, we're going to see that next time. And all of the religions of this world, including the Christian Sunday-keeping religions, are in the grips of Satan the devil and not God the Father and Jesus Christ, though they may profess it. Because in the New Testament, Jesus said, Why call you me Lord, Lord, and you do not what I say? Why do you not practice the will of my Father who is in heaven above? Because all of that's related to the kingdom of God and the government of God, the government of men, and the kingdom of Satan, the devil, and what is happening on this earth. See, God wants you to understand the basic, simple things as an individual. And that's why we have church at home, so you can get away from the world, so you can take the Sabbath day and observe it at home, study your Bible, pray to God, learn and understand. Use church at home as a springboard, as a stepping stone to other understanding. Go to our other website, cbcg.org. We have 2,400 sermons, audio. We have transcripts. We have over 500 videos of sermons that have been done in the past. And you will see in every one of them that we preach the truth of the Word of God. We follow the Word of God. We are not involved in a movement. We are involved in helping you establish a direct relationship between God the Father, Jesus Christ, and you in your life. So once again, thank you for inviting me into your home. So until next time, this is Fred Calder saying, so long, everyone.